I called her um, 5 a.m., two minutes and four seconds, answered. And then I called her again at 5.32 for eight seconds. That was answered. And then um, I called her again at 5.34, was missed. At um, 5.34, was missed. And then I called her again at 6.44, and 49 seconds, and that was not answered. Can I approach just to retrieve your office? Yes. You can take that down. Thank you. Now, with respect, um, <coughs> Kim Reynolds, your testimony that in addition to the phone calls that you have with the defendant, you also uh, have some texts back and forth that morning as well? Correct. And you are, may I approach? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Cameron, I'm showing you a document. Just take a look at that and look up when you're finished. Yep. And uh, do you recognize what that doc, uh, what's in that document? Yes. What do you recognize? It it's my text to Karen. And uh, with respect. Back to uh, the sort of first page of that, is there also uh, similar to the ones I showed you with regard to Mr. O'Keefe? Is there a listing as far as the participants in that conversation? Yes. And who does it say? It's Karen Reed and Kate, Katie Camerano. Uh, may I approach again? Yes. I'm all to seek to introduce in a minute to the next exhibit. No objection, Mr. Jackson. No objection, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Attorney, what's now been marked as Exhibit 52 to you. Uh, and Your Honor, with the court's permission, I would uh, seek to publish this on the screen for the jury as well. Okay. Now, Ms. Camerano, if I could um, direct your attention to uh, sort of the content of this, there's essentially there's blue bubbles and green bubbles, is that correct? Correct. And uh, is there an indication on there as far as uh, who the message is from and who the message is to? The blue bubbles would be me texting Karen. And uh, if you could, um, starting with the, the first bubble on page one, um, if you could just describe to the jury and we'll sort of go through it as far as who the, bubble, uh, who the text is from and uh, what the content is. That's from me. I'm asking Karen, are you okay? And, uh, Ms. Gilman, if you could scroll down. And uh, this next bubble. Go back home so you're safe with Kaylee. He will end up home. I bet he's on someone's couch. And uh, the next bubble down, Ms. Gilman. What's going on, Karen? I'm driving around with Carrie and Jen. And this is a text that you received from, from the to your son? Yes. And uh, is there a time uh, on that associated with when that text was sent? Um. I can't do it back from there. One, no, 5.53 does it say? 5.53 a.m., is that correct? Um, 553, yes. Uh, Ms. Gilman, if you could scroll down to the next message. Um, okay, is one of them driving? And 
just to be clear, this is you texting. Ms. I'm texting Ms. I'm texting Karen. Yes, is one of them driving, and then. And why were you texting that, or why were you concerned about that? Because she was so hysterical. I didn't want her driving. What, if any, response did you receive from Mr. Bishop? Yes. And I said, okay, keep me posted. Um, at his brother's or mom's, question mark, um, or the station he works at. Both of those messages, uh, about what time were those? Um, 6 a.m. And what if any, Ms. Uh, Kelman, if you could scroll down, and then what if any response did you receive from the defendant, Ms. Reed, uh, following those calls? I don't think so. His bro is in West Bridgewater, W. Bridgewater. Ms. Kelman, if you could scroll down again. Right, I'm sorry, I'm just brainstorming. Next uh, green bubble. It's okay. And the blue bubble below that? Any luck. And that was a text you sent at approximately what time now? 6.34. And uh, Ms. Gilman, if you could scroll down to the next one. And what was uh, the He's dead. And again, at what time did you receive that text message? 6.34. Uh, Ms. Cameron, if you could scroll down again. What, Karen, are you serious? And that's a blue bubble, your response to the last statement. Yes. Ms. Cameron, if you could scroll down again. And then, Karen, do you have any idea where he is, or did you find him? He was in the snow. And that last message that you received, uh, what time was that? That was at 6.36. I'm just going to put that down. And uh, Mr. Rogers. Following that uh, text message, the last one about 6.34 a.m., what, if any, other communication did you have with the defendant that morning? Nothing. What, if any, other communication did you have with the defendant since then? None. Now, as far as um, any of the other people that you spoke of, as far as talking to that morning, Ms. Roberts or, or Kaylee, did you have any further conversation with them in regard to what was going on? No. If I may have just uh, one moment now. <clears throat> Nothing further for this witness. All right. Cross examination. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, to Mr. Lally's last point, uh, after that series of text messages that you had early in the morning on January 29th, 2022, you said you didn't hear from Ms. Reed or didn't have any communication with her after that. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Were you, did you reach out to her uh, text message wise? No. Okay. Were you aware that her phone had shortly been had been seized shortly thereafter from her? No. Okay. Thank you. I, that's all I have now. All right, Miss Camerano. Oh, there's nothing else, Mr. Lally, right? No. All right, Miss Camerano, you're all set. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Your next witness, Mr. Lally. Yes, Your Honor. The Commonwealth call, uh, Mr. Kurt Roberts, to the stand. 